Captain Jonah Blackwell gazed out the viewport of the starship Arcturus, marveling at the streaking tunnel of light that surrounded them as they traveled faster than light across the galaxy. They were only a few months into their century-long journey to the Trappist-1 system, but it already felt like a lifetime ago that Earth was home. He turned to his small but mighty crew, the first humans to attempt interstellar travel since the crash 400 years ago. They were the explorers, scientists, and rememberers each specially trained in the ancient arts of memory that made this voyage possible. Without robust computer systems or data storage, only the capacious and creative brains of human beings could safeguard the knowledge needed to traverse the stars. In the early decades of space travel, it was discovered that cosmic radiation caused swift and irrecoverable data corruption. Entire libraries of human knowledge were obliterated in an instant as the particles swept through servers and drives. It was a devastating blow, putting an abrupt halt to crude interstellar dreams. Spacecraft could limp along within the protective bubble of the solar system, but venturing further was impossible without guaranteed access to the sum total of human learning. Or so it seemed, until the great remembering. Inspired by the oral traditions and memory techniques of indigenous cultures that had safeguarded teachings for millennia without physical records, huge schools were founded to train generation after generation in the arts of deep memorization. People were drilled for years, encoding everything from multiplication tables to molecular diagrams to the complete pedigrees of every seed in the botanical archive. They built memory palaces amid beautiful gardens and learned mnemonic strategies bordering on conceptual magic. In the centuries it took to stabilize Earth's climate and rebuild a spacefaring civilization, these rememberers became the living repositories of science, literature, data, and discoveries both new and old. By nature's decree, interstellar voyages would depend not on duplicating fragile digital backups, but on the phenomenal memory of humankind. Jonah's grandfather had been among the first volunteer rememberers absorbing decades of astronomy and physics and aeronautical engineering manuals by rote to provide redundancy in case some died before passing along their knowledge. Jonah remembered the sparkle in the old man's eyes when he spun tales of titanium compressors and navigation by pulsars and the infinite mystery of dark matter. The great remembrance gave humans a vital sense of purpose once more no longer cogs in a machine civilization, but the curators and creators of knowledge that only lived through their breath and synapses. Jonah noticed the ship's first navigator, June, floating gracefully across the anti-gravity deck towards him. At 31 years old, June was already the most celebrated navigator in two centuries. He smiled warmly at the captain. How goes it? Friend Jonah asked. Ready to recite the entirety of beamed propulsion theory to me again. June laughed. No need, it's still fresh from last week but I never tire of discussing the beauty of space-time geometry," he replied. As a child, June had shown such promise at memorizing fine details that he was selected as an apprentice navigator. While most trained rememberers focused on a single discipline necessary for starflight biosystems or computer science or antimatter physics, navigators integrated them all. Their perfect recall also helped cross-check data points among the crew, ensuring accuracy over the long voyage. Jun pulled a small VR unit from his pocket and placed it on his brow. As he activated the device, a stunning waking dream bloomed around them the shimmering heart of the Milky Way rendered in exquisite mathematical precision. Jonah marveled that such wonders could originate unaided from a human mind rather than a mass of circuitry. The entire galaxy was represented just as the latest surveys had mapped before they departed though Jun would update the projections manually as they gathered new readings beyond the heliosphere. Jonah shook his head in awe, only 200 years since the Great Remembering, and already his species traveled the stars. Admiring your physics project came a teasing voice. Jonah turned to see the ship's chief of agriculture, Dr. Ada Zong, approaching with a freshly harvested crate of vegetables nestled in the crook of her arm. Though technically not a trained rememberer, Ada's feats of memory were legendary in their own right. As a horticultural geneticist, she shouldered the Herculean task of preserving seed stock and cultivation instructions for thousands upon thousands of plant species without access to digital gene banks. She knew the Latin name, growing range, and nutritional specifications of nearly every food crop on Earth. 
had to one voyage into the radiation-soaked abyss was enough to wipe out phytochemical secrets refined over millennia. Adia's mind alone safeguarded the fate of Earth's food supply should this bold crew never return. Testing trajectories through the Orion Spur, Adia asked, peering over Jun's shoulder at the splendid projection rotating before them. Despite having compiled this data himself from the consensus of the navigation team, Jun still sighed happily at someone else appreciating the elegant maze of plasma streams, gravitational eddies, and pinprick stars. Ada curved a single finger through the glowing dust clouds, leaving ripples of light in her wake. Astounding, the captain murmured. To think our ancestors once relied solely upon silicon wafers and binary code Jonah was keenly aware of the historical importance of their journey. Not since the earliest navigation by sailors and songlines had exploration depended so completely on human minds and memories. And here they were, his compatriots stepping into the endless night using the full measure of human potential to expand understanding of the universe they inhabited. Over the coming decades, the crew of the Arcturus would add to the growing lore of the interstellar rememberers. They would map orbits around alien worlds, decipher the chemistry of protostars, discover icy biosignatures in a methane dwarf's rings, and one day map the safest, most efficient path by which future explorers might follow them to souls near stellar neighbors. Along the way, they would celebrate deaths among old friends, welcome bright young apprentices carrying on their life's work, stand in awe of tremendous celestial features seen by no living being in four centuries, and perhaps fill portions of empty memory with more personal things. Strains of a favorite song, the feel of silk on skin, earthy smells of tilled soil, the warmth of whispered secrets, the first brush of tentative new love tied up among tapestries of orbital trajectories. Such were the labors and rewards of interstellar rememberers, 